All right, so this is another bad movie review. This is going to be on Suicide Squad. I did one on Batman v Superman, and there's a new Suicide Squad coming out pretty soon. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll, I'll do this one. So it's directed by David Ayer. It is not good at all. It's a little bit better than Batman v Superman for a couple of reasons, but it's still pretty bad. 2016 was a rough year for Warner Brothers in the DCEU. So Viola Davis plays Amanda Waller. And it starts off with her pretty much coming up with this lineup of metahumans and criminals that they can potentially use to go against other metahumans, right? Like there's this whole thing about what if there's another Superman that doesn't doesn't share our values? Um, what were we what are we going to do in response? Which is a wise thing, I guess, but not with the characters that you got here, where one just uses a bat, a crazy girl with a bat, and <laughs> there's a guy that can shoot anything, which wouldn't matter to Superman, unless it was like kryptonite bullets or something like that. Whatever, it doesn't make sense. But there's also, and I'll get into the different people on the team for a second, but there's also a metahuman uh, enchantress, and she's like a witch. Uh, there was a... Um, there was a, what was she, like an archaeologist or something like that, researcher, June Moon, that found a jar in some random place. I don't remember where she was at. It was in a jungle or something. And she lets loose Enchantress, and Enchantress then uh, possesses her. Uh, she's played by Cara Delevingne. And uh, Joel Kinnaman plays Rick Flagg. He's going to end up leading the team, but he's like this soldier. And they develop a relationship, so that's kind of also the way that Amanda Waller is kind of you know, taking control of her or trying to keep her at bay. She also has her heart in like a suitcase that she can stab up. It doesn't really make sense because Enchantress can do just just about every anything. Will Smith, who plays Deadshot, uh, he's a assassin. Well, he's an assassin, and he has this whole thing with his his daughter. That's part of his backstory. It's not as fleshed out as it should be, as none of them are. But it gets the most development in the movie of all the other characters, uh, other than Harley Quinn, played by Margot Robbie. She has this whole thing with Joker where she's his therapist. Um, it's like Mad Love in the, uh, the uh, Batman animated series. She's his therapist, he gets loose, he drives her crazy. She becomes his essential like queen of crime, I guess. Uh, and Jared Leto plays the Joker. We will definitely get back to him. We got Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang. You get to see Flash taking him down after he starts to like, I think he was stealing some jewelry or something like that. Uh, Jay Hernandez is Diablo. He's a pacifist now, but he has the powers of fire. And he, well, you found it, find it out later, but he uh, killed his, his own family. And there's uh, Adwale Akainu? Ak Akbe? I don't know. I guess that's how you say, say his name. And he plays Killer Croc. And they are going to, you know, essentially be the Suicide Squad. Uh, Enchantress gets loose before they even, like, I guess, fully make the team, I guess. And uh, she also lets her other brother loose, this big gigantic CG thing. And he gives her a new heart and all this other stuff. They take over the city. They turn the people into like weird zombie looking things. So they put together the team to go after, um, well, really it's to save Amanda Waller. And then they end up taking her on and her brother. So they kind of, kind of bond while they're out there. And there's a bunch of, uh, you know, recognizable songs over it, which is kind of annoying. We'll talk about that in a second. And so they save Amanda Waller at one point. Harley Quinn almost gets away with the Joker, but that doesn't happen, and Joker is believed to be dead. Of course he's not. And they kind of bond in a bar, too. It's really just the bonding of, of the characters because there's not much really going on uh, other than that. <laughs> and uh, then they end up taking uh, Enchantress on. They win. The uh, Killer Croc gets BT. I don't know if that's because the actor is black. I don't know. It was all that. That was supposed to be funny, I guess. And uh, there's 10 years taken off their sentence. You see the Bruce Wayne talking to Amanda Waller in the mid credit scene. Joker actually frees Harley Quinn, which he probably could have done way before, but whatever. And that's pretty much the, that's the, that's the gist of it. There's not much going on here. There's also a character named Katana, and she's there. <laughs> that's pretty much it. She traps the souls of her victims. She doesn't really do much, and that's, that's pretty much it. So positives. I like Will Smith, I like Margot Robbie, I like their little interactions. Everybody's always talked about that they're the best parts of this movie, and they are. Will Smith is just pretty much just Will Smith, uh, and even he has some pretty bad dialogue. Dialogue is, as a whole is pretty bad. Um, he has to constantly say that they're bad guys. I think Harley Quinn does that too. 
but yeah, they got some some charm with them. I, I've always liked Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. I think she really embodies the character um, that I remember, at least, like from the animated series and stuff like that. Amanda Waller, I think, is a standout too. Uh, she like kills the people that are helping her wipe the computers, and like even the uh, even Deadshot who kills people for a living is like, oh shit. <laughs> Um, so there's there's that, and I actually liked El Diablo's backstory with his with his wife. It's not as fleshed out as it should be, as most of this isn't, but I liked it. I thought it was all right. Let's start off with the thing that got on my nerves probably the most, and it's really only in that first half. It was mainly in the first half. It's that fucking shitty ass soundtrack. Like the soundtrack is just endless recognizable songs. A lot of them are really on the nose. And it's just, it's endless. There are clips that I wanted to use while I was rewatching it this morning for this review, and I couldn't use them because there's a song playing in the background, like during the dialogue. Like it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, Sympathy for the Devil for Amanda Waller because she's seen as the devil, you know. Um, what is it? Uh, you Don't Own Me with Harley Quinn. I mean, it's just, it's endless. And, and, and to really drive that home, right? There's the scene where they're all together for the first time, and they're in like a desert or whatever and Seven Nation Army's playing, right? There's a Harley Quinn line that I wanted to use in this review, but I couldn't because the song was still playing in the background. They talk to Rick Flagg for a little bit, triangle bitch with Will Smith and, 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 and Rick Flagg. That's like a minute or two, couple minutes long. And then uh, they get all their weapons and they put on their stuff and Harley Quinn's putting on her outfit and Without Me by Eminem is playing. Then they go, they're still in the same place. They get this little briefing or whatever from Amanda Waller. And, <laughs> and another song starts playing as soon as they get in the helicopter to go there. It's like, going up to the spirit in the sky, whatever. I forgot what the name of that song is. But I was like, wow, like three songs almost back to back. I mean, it is, it is crazy how many songs are in this bitch. I mean, it is, it, it, it's so bad. You know, it, there's one song that's like original for the soundtrack, um, Gangster. And uh, it's, it's during a flashback that kind of comes out of nowhere. It doesn't really need to be in, in the place where it's at in the movie. With Harley Quinn and Joker, where he pushes her out into like the, the vat of like toxic waste or whatever. I think that's what officially makes her go crazy. Uh, and it's like, yeah, you know, he's, he's a gangster, I guess. So that's why that that's the song that you put there. You know, it's just it's just so obvious, so on the nose. Harley Quinn is in the jail, back in the jail at the very end, uh, because the characters end up pretty much almost the same place that they start in. So it's almost like, what was the point of this? And uh, Bohemian Rhapsody is playing. Like, okay, like she's crazy. Yeah, is this real life or is this just fantasy? I I got you. This whole plan and all this doesn't already doesn't really make sense. Like I said. None of these characters are taking down Superman. They should barely even t be able to take down Enchantress in this movie. It doesn't even make sense when it actually happens. This little big little video game boss fight that they got at the end. But Enchantress wasn't even freed yet when they were really starting to talk about it and, and put it out there and, and go to look at them to see how they are and everything. And Amanda Waller just, she's amazing. Viola Davis is amazing in the movie. And she's really, she's an intimidating presence, definitely. But she makes some really dumb mistakes here, especially with Enchantress. As powerful as she is, there's no way she's going to be able to contain her just because she has her heart. Of course not. There are, There is very little development of certain characters. Slipknot gets killed at the very beginning after having like one line, and it's pretty obvious that's, that's the reason. Uh, he's really just there to show the stakes of them potentially getting blown up if they try to escape. So that's it. It's a plot device. And... You know, when you have Will Smith and Margot Robbie, where they have full-on little, you know, things for their backstory, a whole thing with the kid, they actually have these, you know, these little tussles with Batman or whatever. Uh, the Common gets killed because the Joker, I guess, wanted him to hit on his girl because he was trying to be respectful, and so he killed him. <laughs> He's crazy. So, you know, when you have that full-on stuff with those two characters, and then Killer Croc is just in a sewer, and they just grab him from a sewer. It's a little bit weird. That's why you probably should have developed these characters fully in their own like movies, fighting Batman or something like that, before you put them together to be in this movie, to be doing this. The pacing. I mean, you spend so much time just putting them together. I think it's like almost just about 40 minutes by the time they're actually about to do some shit. That's why this movie is fucking two hours long for no reason. 
Um, because really when they get on the mission, I mean, they're just walking down the street. I mean, <laughs> that's it. They're just walking down the street and fighting weird zombie things, right? There's no stakes in any of this. There's multiple characters that are, you know, uh, like Amanda Waller gets, you know, crash lands in a helicopter and she's brought to Enchantress. And I'm thinking, why doesn't Enchantress kill her? Somehow she's still alive. How are you not dead? Uh, Joker is believed to be dead after he crashes, but of course he's still alive in the end. Uh, there's no real stakes in this. These little monster zombie characters are never going to be able to do anything to these characters. Um, you know, the, the, there's there's very little stakes and everything, but you you really do by the end of it, like when they're like friends, when they're almost like doing like power friendship type level shit. I mean, it would have been cheesy for the Justice League, but for the, the Suicide Squad, it's insane. Like, they they only kind of dealt with each other for, like, a, just a little while. This is before even the bar scene where they really start to, like, truly bond. And Captain Boomerang's like, oh, good mate, when Will Smith, uh, when Deadshot doesn't shoot Harley Quinn when she's escaping. It's like, where did that come from? Like, where is this camaraderie really coming from? Just from them constantly looking over each other and being like, we're the bad guys. I mean, we are the bad guys. We're the bad guys. We're the bad guys. We're the bad guys. Don't forget, we're the bad guys. All right, so let's talk about Joker. He needs a segment all his own. Uh, Jared Leto's Joker is fucking trash. He's so bad. He's so bad. His line delivery, his lines that he's saying. I mean, like I said with the whole comment thing, didn't make any sense at all to me other than him being crazy. And it's part of an, uh, uh, an overall thing with this movie that there's not much subtlety, like with the soundtrack and stuff like that. But... Just because he's Joker doesn't mean there should be no subtlety whatsoever. Ha ha ha, tattooed on him, damaged on his forehead. Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, the, the, he, he goes crazy when Harley Quinn gets taken by Batman. So, so he has baby clothes in the corner, knives all around him. He's got marker around his mouth. And you know why? It's because he's crazy. A lot of that happens with Harley Quinn too, where it's just... Hey, she's crazy. She's a crazy one. She's crazy. What a crazy bitch. And that's it. I mean, that, that's, all, that's all it is. But man, Joker. Yeah, I mean, man, he's like, oh, you know, giving, giving somebody, giving uh, that security guard who is insufferable in this movie, uh, like, a, like a massage. <laughs> oh, ooh, you know, a oh, honka honka. Like, it is so bad. It's so it's it's laughably bad. I, th I know some people who who like him just simply because they like laughing at him, and that makes sense. Are you sweet talking me? Uh, uh, uh. I love this guy. <laughs> He's so intense. I mean, he is just, he got the bright green hair, the grill. I mean, who would take this guy seriously the way that he's acting in that club? I mean, he's just ha 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 just laughing with his, with his grill and everything. It's just so ridiculous. Who could take this guy seriously? Batman wouldn't even take this guy seriously the way he is in this. He's just some, he almost seems like he would be just like a low level, low level gangster, but he's not really, he doesn't seem like the, the clown prince of crime at all in this. It's just... It's, it's, it's bad casting, it's partially him, but it's also the direction. This is clearly what they wanted from this, from this version of Joker, and it just falls completely flat. I'm not invested in their relationship or anything like that, or him breaking her out. It's like, all right, hurry up and do it. He has his team where they're just wearing random like animal outfits, and I guess it's supposed to be quirky. Oh my God, he's crazy. He just does whatever, doesn't he? Uh, what did he say? Uh, oh my God, this, what did he say? Uh, I don't think I wrote it down, but when he was in the uh, the helicopter or plane or whatever, and it was about to go down, the, he said, "What is it? This bird's been <laughs> this bird's been baked." <laughs> I was like, "Man, this this dialogue is so shitty, man. It's so bad." Um, well, Joker, I can talk about him all day, but I think that's it. Let's let's get to the the final little thing here. So they finally come together for whatever reason, even though they've been freed, uh, and they have this this fight scene. Uh, El Diablo takes on uh, the brother, and it's this big, gigantic, fake-looking CG fight, like, straight out of a shitty video game. But that's not even just it. Enchantress, literally ever since she wasn't dirty, like, when she looks like Pigpen from Charlie Brown, she probably looks a little bit better. But when she starts to light up and she's moving around, that's pretty much what she's been doing all all movie long. I think she has the plan to use something to do something. <laughs> I don't know. There's just a light in the sky, like a lot of these movies. But... 
and she's transforming all the people to zombies for whatever reason. But when she fights the Suicide Squad, it legit feels like quick time events. Like you get them to the like a certain part in their health bar, and they're doing and you're doing quick time events. Like you press X to do this thing, Square to do this. You know, you press Square. That's what it feels like. Like you would be pressing Square for Harley Quinn to hit her, and then you'd be pressing Triangle for for uh, Deadshot to shoot at her, even though she's bulletproof. Seems it seems like. You know, and then, and then they, they, they're they somehow able to free June Moon from Enchantress. I guess maybe Enchantress is gone completely now. You know, there's this whole thing about June Moon being willing to die to so that uh, Enchantress doesn't go, go go wild. But that's fine because there's no stakes at all in this and he's just able to free her. But man, that final fight scene, man, that shit was garbage. And Harley Quinn being like, you mess with my friends before she slides. You've known them for a night. I mean, I, it just, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work. This movie is bad. It is a mess. It feels so long because the pacing is so bad. The dialogue is fucking terrible. I remember that that security guard is so lame. What's for dinner? Ames, if this man shoots me, I want you to kill him. And I want you to go clear my browser history. There are certain things that work. There are certain characters that work. Certain character interactions, too. Like, the bar scene is legitimately really good. But everything else about this movie just completely falls flat. You were trying way too hard. You were trying to be funny. You were trying with the soundtrack. You were trying it all. This movie, as I've been saying since I saw it, is clearly trying to kind of be the answer to, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, like that kind of thing with the soundtrack and the characters being kind of funny. And, you know, because, like, the Guardians of the Galaxy, like, they're kind of assholes in the beginning. Like they they break out of a, um, out of prison together. That was their first real interaction working together in that movie. Like there's a lot of that. And then they they pretty much dropped all pretenses now because they literally got the director from Guardians of the Galaxy to do the new one. And I don't even know if any of this movie is really even carrying over to that movie at all. Uh, most of it didn't carry over really that much to to Birds of Prey. I mean, Jared Leto wasn't even in it. I'm rambling. I'm gonna give this utter trash just like I gave Batman v Superman. These movies are so terrible. The only saving grace for this movie is it's not infuriating. It's a little bit annoying, but it's not infuriating like Batman v Superman. There were multiple times where I wanted to walk out of the theater when I saw that. This movie is just, it's bad, but I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not upset. So yeah, that is Suicide Squad. And that's it. I'm done.